get rid of all of your table manners and fit in, do what they do. Eat with your fingers. So I was very much into like cutting up everything. I mean, you still like use a fork and knife, but you don't use utensils when at all possible to just eat it with your hands. When you eat, just don't try to be so like the Queen of England when you eat because then they kind of see you as prissy and a little bit distant, a little bit snobby. You do greet everybody. You wave to people when you see them. Even if you don't really know them, you still wave. They greet with a beast, like kiss on each cheek, and then you always shake hands with the men. And if you failed to do that, it was kind of seen as like a, a very obvious rejection. And they take it very hard and they're very sensitive people, so you don't want to lose favor with them. You greet everyone. Um, you don't necessarily need to be happy or smiling, because mm -hmm. they can see that as kind of obnoxious. Generally speaking, this is all very general, but you make sure that you are very friendly. So they pretty much identify themselves in two ways, family and religion. And those are the, that's like how they introduce themselves. And this person, they normally introduce their last name first, so you can identify in place, and there aren't too many family names in Tahiti. They're just big families, and sometimes they intermarry. So they always tell you, it's almost like a Lord of the Rings thing when they're like, I'm Aragon, son of blah, blah, blah. You know, that's literally how they introduce themselves. And so it's important to understand also that they live together most of the time in families. Like there would be a street, and that is like one family. It's like... Um, there might be multiple houses or it might just be one house that has been added onto and it's just like the aunt moves in or the, the grandma gets old and so they take care of her and she lives with them. Um, so family is important in the sense that they're very close. Pretty much every single person we met believed in God. So I was with my companion and it was the end of the night and we just had stuff on the floor and I was just like, I'll just sweep it outside real fast before we go to sleep. Like it literally would have taken 15 seconds probably just to quickly like sweep, sweep, sweep and then sweep out the door. And as I opened the door to like do the final sweep to get all the junk off the floor outside, um, the companion I had was like, whoa, like you cannot do that. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm cleaning the house. <laughs> and she's like, no, you can't do that at night. Like wait until morning. And she, I was like, why? She's like, you'll let bad spirits in. <laughs> I was like, okay, choose your battles. <laughs> Taking vitamins was seen as a bad thing. I had vitamins to, because I got a lot of food poisoning in Tahiti. And I had a companion who kept asking me if I was drugging myself. I was like, no, they're vitamins. They're good for you. And she's like, no, that lets bad spirits into your body. Like you can't take, you need it naturally, like in the food you eat. Like, well, I'm not getting it naturally in the food I eat, so I need to take these. And so anyway, it was kind of a joke, but she was kind of superstitious about it. We were teaching someone, um, older man and his wife, and next door was his brother and his brother's wife. And he said that his brother was jealous of him because of how beautiful his wife was. And so he said that she kept having these weird health problems and he attributed that to voodoo being done by his brother and his wife. Um, that was the only experience I had of voodoo. They are very big into possession. That was kind of like in terms of like the supernatural side. The Tahitians are very feeling people. They feel a lot of things. They can feel if someone's sincere. They can feel if something's not right or off. And so they're very keyed into supernatural presence. And sometimes they would give you cooked fish, but like the whole fish. Like it's literally like they took it out of the ocean, they cooked it, and then they put it on your plate. So it had the eyeballs and like the jaw. Like it was just a fish. And people would eat the eyeballs. And they tried to get me to eat the eyeballs, but that was kind of one thing I was like, sorry guys, <laughs> that's not happening. I wish, I wish I could, but I'd probably like be sick right then. Um, they really like suck the eyeball juice. With some smaller fish, you can eat the bones. The food in Tahiti is very starchy. Very, very starchy. They have a lot of carbs in their diet. I think it's attributed to the fact that a lot of people are poor, so buying things like rice or the French baguettes, um, those things are subsidized by the French government. So you can buy a lot of it in large quantities, and they have big families, and you can eat a lot of it, and it fills you up, and it gives you all of your energy that you need. It was very common to have like pasta, bread, um, mashed potatoes, and like some other kind of starch in one meal. One of the things important to understanding Tahitian food is that it is the mix of those three cultures, Chinese, French, and Polynesian. So the Chinese come, you know, you get a lot of rice, stir fry, 
Chinese food and the French you would get like the really cool desserts and like you'd get like the really like um, almost like beautiful food and it was like art sometimes I loved seeing that because it got very creative and then the Polynesian you get a lot of like fruits and fish and um, fish is rarely cooked in Tahiti they eat a lot of raw fish and it's called poisson cru and so what they would do is they would just mix it Poisson cru is one of their most like Tahitian Tahitian classic foods. It's you chop up raw fish, just like tuna, and then you mix it with carrots and cucumber and coconut milk, and you mix it right before you eat it. So like you get there, and everything is on the table except for poisson cru, and then they just go ahead and like mix it all together, and they put it on the table. You pray and then you eat like right away and um, eating raw fish is you just can't think about it like while you're eating it you can't think about the fact that it's raw fish and then later you realize like oh I just ate raw fish and then for the first three weeks I was like sick <laughs> but um, but it was really good other than that just large quantities it was almost like classic food like spaghetti or um, stir fry or just some kind of like steak and fries situation kind of American in a lot of senses We have that blend of cultures here, but another classic Tahitian Dish was fafaru Which is also raw fish that you put in salt water in a closed container And you let it sit in the Sun For like a couple of weeks depending on how strong you wanted it and then you eat it with fermented coconut milk so, and that's called um, Miti Hue, which is Tahitian. You could smell it throughout like the entire neighborhood. So everyone knew when someone was making fafaru and they made it all the time, they like it really salty. And you would just eat it as fast as possible. You wouldn't chew it, you just swallow it whole. And I only ate it once. All the fruits there are just delicious and juicy and everywhere. Okay. Uh, mangoes, bananas. Bananas are smaller and they're sweeter. Mangoes are just huge and juicy and just incredible. Pineapple, super sweet. Also smaller. It's almost like the fruit is smaller and so it's like condensed, like the flavor and everything. Avocados were huge. Avocados were like this big. And you'd go to someone's house and sometimes you'd be eating dinner and then for dessert they would say, okay, like what fruit do you guys want? And you just like look around their backyard and you'd see like papaya, mango, pineapple, banana. It's like, oh, I'd love a banana. And they're like, okay, great. And they go and pick it off the tree for you and then you just eat it. And it was crazy. It was so good and it was so fresh and it was free. For desserts in Tahiti, they don't like sweet things. Even the chocolate was very savory. There was pretty much no sugar in anything, which is hard because I love sugar. And I was like, what is happening? This is a chocolate cake that has no sweetness. But, um... Yeah, they're very savory, but they get their sugar from fruit, mostly. Sea urchin was really, really weird for me. It was like the texture of like tongue. It was like a ball it was like with like bumps, you know, all over it, really chewy. And I don't know if it was the way it was prepared or not, but it tasted like Windex. Like it was just like really chemical. And yeah, and it was like that the two or three times that I ate it. So I don't know what it was. I think sea urchin are poisonous, so I might have been eating poison. I'm not really sure. Still not sure what happened. One thing I also never ate, it's mostly in the outer islands, is dog meat. They think it's really funny to feed Americans like dog meat just to see how we react. You try and not react, but um, they're like, yeah, this is great. Like really good. Like it's kind of dark. It's like really tender. Like what is it? And they're like, do you remember that dog you saw out front? <laughs> And they were like, oh my gosh. So it was kind of kind of traumatic. 